in a world where carbs are your enemy, you need one man to help you fight your battles. That man is Jimmy. Combating nutrition, disinformation, and general bull. It's Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com. I want some pizza, I'm just in the mood So I check the website, real good foods But I'm trying to eat healthy, trust No flour, it's 11 inch cauliflower crust Low carb, high fat, and plenty protein Grain and gluten free, everything that you need Made in four flavors, ooh wee Uncured pepperoni, margarita, veggie, or cheese If low carb pizza is what you want You need to check realgoodfoods.com Taste is amazing, oh yeah it's the bomb You need to check Real Good Foods. Foods.com. Free shipping online and in Kroger stores across the U.S. RealGoodFoods.com. Woo! Another YouTube live. We're here with another episode of Jimmy Rants. JimmyRants.com is the website. We like to go live uh, usually in the mornings lately. I've been going on Instagram live. And in the afternoons, I go on YouTube live. So this is brand new that we're doing YouTube videos, YouTube, li- YouTube live videos so uh, go follow me if you're not already on youtube type in uh youtube.com slash live in low carb man so that's l-i-v-i-n-l-o-w-c-a-r-b-m-a-n once you're there you can watch it live just like all of the wonderful people that are coming in right now thank you guys for being here watching it live if you missed the live they do have it on replay for you over on youtube and if you can't find the past episodes it's real easy just type in a keyword, Jimmy Rants, you will find the show. Finally, we have the best of the best moments of this here show in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. Today's Jimmy Rants is about a new study that I just found out, you guys, uh, found out about. And I just had to share it with you sooner than later. Because there is this notion that a lot of people have of, okay, I'll just eat keto all throughout the week. And then on the weekends, I'll let myself go. Or even some people, I'll eat keto for six days a week. But I want one day a week where I can pretty much eat whatever I want. And this new study, you guys says that having just one cheat meal could actually be causing damage to your blood vessels. So let's take a closer look at this study. And if you're just joining us, we are going over a brand new study here today that just came out uh, outlining why you probably don't want to cheat on your ketogenic lifestyle. So here we go. So the study was done out of UBC uh, Okanagan, and this is in Canada. It was published in the journal Nutrients. They had funding from the Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, so that's their version of the NIH, uh, and the Michael Smith Foundation for Health Research. So highly, highly published. Um, uh, or reputable people to get published. That's pretty awesome. Uh, It was in the journal Nutrients, and it just came out today. So the headline on this one, just one dose of carbohydrates can damage blood vessels. So an associate professor in the School of Health and Exercise Sciences at UBCO and study senior author, his name Jonathan Little, He says keto has become very common for weight loss as well as to manage diseases like type 2 diabetes. It consists of eating foods that are rich in fat, moderate in protein, and very low in carbohydrates that causes the body to go into a state of nutritional ketosis. He says the diet can be very effective because once the body is in ketosis and it's starved of its preferred fuel of glucose, 
the body's chemistry then changes and it begins to aggressively burn stored body fat. This is why uh, the theory goes that you lose weight when you go keto. It's because you've shifted the amount of fuel uh, or the kind of fuel, excuse me, um, that your body is burning over from sugar burner to fat burner. So uh, burning this stored body fat leads to weight loss and can reverse the symptoms of type 2 diabetes. So the doctoral student that was a part of this study, Cody Durer, we were interested in finding out what happens to the body's physiology once a dose of glucose is reintroduced. So what they did was they put them on a ketogenic diet, got them keto, uh, got them in ketosis, and then decided to give them uh, a big bolus of glucose. So we'll look at that here in just a moment. Since impaired glucose tolerance and spikes in blood sugar are known to be associated with an increased risk in cardiovascular disease, it made sense to look at exactly what happened in the blood vessels once this sugar hit their body. So for the study, researchers found nine healthy young males and they had them consume a seven-day high-fat, low-carbohydrate diet. So the macronutrients broke down to 70% fat, 20% protein, and 10% carbohydrates. This was meant to mimic uh, what a modern ketogenic diet looks like. Okay. Then, after the seven days of doing this uh, keto, they had them drink a solution of glucose that was 75 grams of glucose. So the standard American diet, when you're eating crappy garbage, as I like to call it, typically in a day, you would eat, what, 300 grams, 250, 300 grams of carbs. So they only had them do 75 grams in this one glucose drink. So what they were originally looking for was an inflammation response. Did they have one or did they not? Also, they wanted to know what their blood glucose would be doing. So what we found instead, listen to this, you guys. When they did this one week long ketogenic diet, and then they gave them just one glass of 75 grams of glucose, they found that the vessel walls were being damaged. Just, just that one 75 grams of glucose did that. Even though they were keto seven days, just having that one caused this vessel damage. They said the most likely culprit is the body's own metabolic response to excessive blood sugar, which causes blood vessel cells to shed and possibly die. People don't realize this. Your goal, if you want to be healthy, is to keep those blood sugar spikes from happening. Now, there are these people that are insulin sensitive, and we hate you, by the way, if you're one of those people. Those of us that have insulin resistance, it's very difficult to keep blood sugar and insulin levels in check without going uh, to a ketogenic diet. But there's some people, they eat whatever they want, and they don't have these issues because of their body's insulin sensitivity. And so just having those blood sugar fluctuations alone can cause a lot of issues in your health. So if you're just joining us, we're talking about this brand new study. It just came out and it's showing the impact of if you cheat on your ketogenic diet, which a lot of people like to do, they like to do the whole, I'll, I'll, I'll eat keto all week and then uh, on the weekends I'll take off or one day I'll take off. And we're having new evidence that shows that's probably not a good idea. So the fact is they used young, healthy people in this study, and they got the response with the damage to the blood vessels. If that's happening in healthy people, can you imagine what it's doing in people with type 2 diabetes? Can you imagine what's happening in, in a woman with PCOS? Can you imagine the person with insulin resistance? The magnitude of harm that's being done cannot be understated. Even though there were they were otherwise, otherwise healthy young males. When we looked at their blood vessels after consuming the glucose drink, the results looked like they came from someone who had poor cardiovascular health. It was somewhat alarming. 
The researchers point out that it only had nine individuals in the study, so we need more research uh, to verify these findings. But the results should give those on keto pause about even thinking about cheating on your ketogenic diet. Now, there are people who talk about cycling in carbs and doing these carb up days. I would think this research flies in the face of doing that. Now, I realize there's some people, they do it for very strategic reasons, uh, and they have their reasons why they carb up uh, now and again. But for the general health person, this new research, you guys, is making a strong case for why you want to stay keto all the time. Because people often ask me, do you try to stay in ketosis? Don't you want to cycle in and out of ketosis? I'm like, why? 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 I feel so good when I'm in ketosis. Why would I do that to my body? And then we got people like Dr. William Davis that are telling people, oh, you don't want to stay ketotic too long, has all these uh, problems in your health. And yet, once again, we had a new study that's flying in the face of that. Uh, So... They said, my concern is many people go on keto, whether it's to lose weight, treat type 2 diabetes, or another health reason. Uh, They may be undoing a lot of the positive effects that they're seeing on their health if their blood vessels suddenly are blasted with a bunch of glucose, especially if these people are at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease in the first place. And here's the dirty little secret, you guys. Cardiovascular disease is related to what you put in your mouth, but it's not what you think. Everybody thinks cardiovascular disease is related to the fat and cholesterol that you consume. So saturated fat and cholesterol supposedly raise your uh, heart disease risk because it increases your cholesterol levels and clogs your arteries and all that stuff. What they're not telling you is it's the blood glucose spikes that happen that cause you to become more insulin resistant. And it's the higher insulin that is actually at the root cause of cardiovascular disease. Type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, all of these are metabolic diseases. They're all basically the same variation on the same disease. So hear that loud and clear. They concluded that the data suggests that a ketogenic diet is not something Thing you just want to do for six days and then take Saturday off. So let that be a word to the wise. Again, this was all from the University of British Columbia, Okanagan campus. Um, and I had another uh, couple of stories on this. I want to make sure I hit everything that was in the study. But if you're just joining us, a brand new study says you better not cheat on your keto diet unless you like to damage your blood vessels. Um, that's no bueno. So... So what they did, I think I saw somebody ask a question, did they feed them refined carbohydrates? No. What they did was they had them on keto, 70%, 20%, 10% of fat, protein, carbs. And then they had one solution of glucose, 75 gram dose. So it's probably just like a liquid solution of just pure glucose. And here's the thing, people don't eat glucose. What they eat is a combination of glucose and fructose for the most part, right? Um, Sucrose is table sugar that would have a nice mix of both. And so they're not eating just glucose, but this is the response they got from just eating glucose, which they said is the equivalent of a large bottle of soda or a plate of French fries. So, uh, So yeah, so they... Had them eat that. I'm just seeing if there's anything new in this other article. I don't see anything new there. There was something new, I thought, in one of these articles. Oh, I printed this one off because this tells you all the people that funded the study. So once again, this was published in the journal Nutrients. It just came out, you guys. Brand new, hot off the presses research. And I wanted to bring it to you here today. Because there are a lot of people that still feel like, oh, well, I was good all week on keto. So if I was good all week on keto, I deserve to have a cheat meal, to have a cheat day, to have a cheat weekend. 
There's so many people that believe that. And I've never understood that whole concept of you earned the right to do something that you know is not good for your health. Now, does that mean people should just always, always, always be super duper strict uh, and that they ever veer from that that's no good? Uh, No, I think realistically people want to have those periods every once in a while and it's a choice. They're choosing to do that. But you've got to know the consequences. And now it's a very small study, just nine people and nine people that are relatively healthy and young. I want to see this same study replicated, not just with young people. I want a variety of ages. I would love to see um, what some older people do with it. So people in their 20s. People in their 30s, people in their 40s at varying things. So some have type 2 diabetes, some would have uh, PCOS, others would just have abdominal obesity. I want to see maybe 100 people go through this same protocol because it would be interesting to me to see what the differences are. I would think some of the uh, blood vessel damage would be far worse in someone with insulin resistance. Far, far worse. And here's the thing, too. They only put the kids, the nine kids that did the study, on keto for one week. So we know if you're not uh, if you're if you've not done keto before, if you're brand new to keto and you're shifting over from whatever your your diet is. And if they're young people, they're probably eating crap. (laughs) So one week on keto, they probably didn't get fully keto adapted. I would have loved for them to have at least gone two weeks uh, and ideally four weeks to get them fully keto adapted and then do this one bolus of uh, glucose all at one time. Because I wonder if their body would have responded the same. I wonder if the body would have responded far, far different and worse to basically say, hey, we like where we're feeling with this keto thing. Why'd you give us a bunch of glucose all of a sudden? I thought you were a fattened ketone burner. Why are you giving me all this glucose? So really interesting things to ponder, you guys. And hopefully as this kind of research comes out and then it begets more research along the same lines, people get out of this notion of thinking it's okay to cheat uh, and people thinking that, oh, well, I deserve to have a cheat meal because I've been so good. But what if you undid all of the great uh, work that you were doing? And what if that one cheat meal, the 175 grams, I I would have wished they did this in the study. How long would it take them to get back into ketosis again? Because we've seen previous research that I've shared about here before on Jimmy Rants that showed that a relatively healthy person... um, who they put on a ketogenic diet and then they had them feed one meal, one very high carb meal. It took them about seven to 10 days to get back into ketosis on average. And then they did the same thing with middle-aged insulin resistant women. And they found that those women took 30 days to get back into ketosis just after one meal, you guys of high carb. So I think it's going to vary from person to person. This certainly lays the groundwork. Now, obviously, they weren't looking at ketosis. They weren't looking at those markers. They were looking at blood vessel damage. But this is this is some pretty compelling evidence that I hope they take and run with it. And if they don't, I hope someone does, because this kind of information could save people from making a bad decision about what they're doing on their keto by choosing to continue to cheat when we now know that's not good. All right, let's see what you guys have to say. Welcome in, welcome in. Going to scroll all the way back to the top. Bear with me just a second. Uh, Thanks for being here. Clayta says, oh my God, I caught you. Well, you caught me. Welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here. Bonnie said, I'm glad you told us over on Instagram because my phone did not alert me with a beep. Uh, Just showed up your name. Well, I'm glad. Uh, yeah, so uh, I do Instagram live typically you guys in the morning for these Jimmy rants and YouTube live in the afternoon. And so when I go live in the afternoon, I always go on Instagram first and say, OK, guys, I'm about to go live on YouTube. So I'm glad you guys made it. 
Uh, Pooh Bear says, my first live. Well, welcome. I'm glad you made it. And I'm honored that I'm your uh, I'm your debut. Where do you find all these studies, says Anita. So, Anita, I got my finger on the pulse of this community. Um, and I've been out in this community for about 15 years. So I have uh, lots of ways to get the new research that comes out. I always try to keep you guys on the cutting edge, too, because I guarantee you're not going to hear this on the 5 o'clock news. Uh, six o'clock news, you're going to hear about AFib studies, and you're going to hear about egg studies, and you're going to hear about keto crotch, but you're not going to hear this kind of information, which is why I try to bring it to you here on Jimmy Rants. Terry Lee says, I have heart disease. I stay clean keto intentionally. You have to. If you want to stay healthy, you have to. Uh, Pooh Bear, I've been strict keto for three months now. I've not cheated one time. I'm extremely afraid to because I know it'll be very hard on me. I go nuts on food. And that's another thing. Thank you, Pooh Bear, that just forget about the blood vessel damage. That's bad enough in and of itself. But think about all the cravings and all the hunger and all the carb hangover that you have to deal with if you do decide to cheat. The only thing you're cheating in that aspect is yourself. And of course, it takes people to go through that and to feel crappy to go, why in the world did I do that? It's just so much easier to stay keto, which is why it's so perplexing to me. All these people that say, oh, you need to cycle in your carbs. No, I don't. I need to cycle in more ketones. So I need to cycle. Uh, C doc, great to know. Once keto, stay keto for life. Never could go back to crappy carbs after keto, keeping inflammatory response low with keto. And that's another undervalued uh, benefit of a ketogenic diet, C doc. You know this as good as anybody. The inflammatory pathways, when they are going hog wild, that's how disease takes place. And so you take away the inflammation, you take away the disease. So people, oh, bah, uh, that won't harm me. It's just one meal. Well, we now know just one meal could damage blood vessels. And you damage them enough times with this glucose response, eventually it's going to cause cardiovascular issues. Laura says, why go backwards? Keto is for life. Exactly. Uh, Greg wants to know, did they use processed carbs? No, they used a solution uh, that was 75 grams of just glucose. So whenever you do what's called a five-hour glucose tolerance test, they give you the same kind of solution. So you go in, you get a fasted blood sugar. If you do it with insulin markers, they also do insulin. And, and then they have you drink this 75-gram solution of glucose. And then from there, uh, what you do is you drink it. And then every like 30 minutes, they... Um, test your blood sugar and test your insulin and then every hour on uh, for the first hour and then every hour on the hour after that two three four five they test your blood sugar and insulin just to see how you're handling uh the glucose so it's just pure glucose uh not necessarily refined grains and uh sugar uh let's see here oop it disappeared hang with me guys um Well, where did it go? <laughs> okay, there it is. Sorry. Uh, great to see studies supportive of keto lately. I hope it's a positive new trend. Uh, CDOC, I think we're seeing a lot more of these because they started working on them a couple of years ago. Now, this was a short-term one. Some of the longer-term ones from people like Dr. Sarah Hallberg, they're coming. We, did the, we had the one-year update last year, and it was a biggie, you guys. Uh, but we're coming up on the two-year update of that study. It's going to be interesting to see as those longer studies of keto start to come out. And I guarantee you, when that study comes out and other ones like it, we will share about it here on Jimmy Rants. Uh, every time I catch your videos, it's exactly something I need to hear. Thank you. Thank you for that. Keto D Diamond says, cheat meals uh, are going to happen, but they have tried this with non-keto people to see if the effect was the same with the same drink. I'm not sure what you're asking there. Uh, cheat meals going to happen, but they have tried this with non-keto people. Yeah, these people here were non-keto people. They put them on a keto diet for one week, and then they 
fed them the glucose solution. Uh, Dana says, have always thought going off and on cycling made no sense at all. Certainly not for those of us doing this for health as well as weight. But either way, why make your body chemistry crazier? Exactly, Dana. My point exactly. Perhaps the drink would affect someone no matter what. Well, Keto Diamond, I would think... I would think the take home though is you're seeing blood vessel damage. So whether someone came from a ketogenic diet, they came from a paleo diet, they came from a vegan diet, they came from a crappy garbage diet, having this glucose, they're showing very clear blood vessel damage. I don't think what they're saying though is because they came from keto, that caused the blood vessel damage. I think it's the sugar in and of itself, the glucose in and of itself that caused the blood vessel damage. And so the moral of this story is don't eat a bunch of glucose all at one time. Uh, Harp C says, glad to hear it. Keto is so good. Don't want uh, sad, rich, and carnivorous cats. Oh, I don't want that. Okay. Sad, rich, and carnivorous cats is your username that you like to put on my YouTube uh, comments. Thank you for that. Uh, It could have lesser effect if they were keto for longer. I think maybe keto diamond. I would love to see what would happen. Although I would think that the body would be so used to burning fat and ketones that maybe it would be an even more abnormal response because you've uh, introduced this huge bolus of glucose. I don't know. Let's see the study. Bonnie Linnae, amazing information. I thought so too. Fully adapted. uh, Don't feel the need for cheat days. Don't miss my sugar addiction. Nope, we sure don't. Uh, J-E-M, happy to catch your live feed. Well, thank you for all of your great comments. I've seen you comment on a lot of my past Jimmy rants uh, on replay. So welcome in. Glad you're here live. Val says, never uh, was one to have a cheat day or any di- on any diet I was on. I mess up sometimes, but will be watching myself closely. Thanks for the info. I think that's the take-home message, Val, is... Some people thought, okay, it's just one time. It's not going to really harm me. I'll get right back on plan again. And all those things are great. But you got to know you caused damage when you did that. You went out to the Olive Garden and you wanted to have their their breadsticks. You caused damage when you did that. You went uh, on vacation and you decided to indulge in a dessert. And you chose to do that. You caused damage to your blood vessels. And I think if you think about it in that way, it puts so much perspective on this, that this isn't just a diet about weight loss. This is about total health. And if you want total health to be solvent, then you don't want to do these kinds of things that are going to cause damage to blood vessels, right? CDOC says results like this one are similar to those that quit smoking and then return to smoking. Uh, far worse for them had they then had they never quit smoking might be the same for those that start keto and return to sad. This is always a funny one too, C Doc. Uh, and thank you for your for your comment. I've seen this before. People are like, "Don't you dare go on that ketogenic diet because if you go on the keto diet, you can never come off of it. If you do, you'll pack on the pounds and you'll lose all of those health effects." And I'm going, so. If I stay keto, do I stay healthy? And that's a bad thing. Why? I've never understood never understood that. Aaron says, what up, Jimmy? What up, Aaron? Keto Diamond, great live. Glad I caught one. Love hearing about the new research. Yes, I always try to keep you up to date on what's new in keto research. Um I hate that it keeps disappearing here. All right. After a heart attack, they serve you crap. Terry Lee, that they do. That is part of the problem. Um, But that's a whole nother problem for a whole nother day to talk about. I'm too addicted to foods to cheat. I feel somewhat a freeing feeling not having to worry about food and overeating. Bonnie, that's that's what keto does for you. Um, It really, really does. This is really annoying having to keep going back every time. (laughs) Pooh Bear says, I had some blackberries yesterday and the cravings afterwards were insane. I knew that fructose screwed me. And see, some people would see blackberries, Pooh Bear. Oh, it's natural sugar. I was just watching, Christine was watching some cooking channel, I think on the Food Network or the, 
something, and they were talking about that they made this dish, uh, and it was from uh, non-sugary food, just had dates in it. And so the sweetness just came from the dates. So that's not sugar. And I'm going, no, that's sugar. It's just not refined sugar, but it's still sugar. We've got a long way to go, you guys. I just want to see if blood vessels would stay the same if they were on keto or sad. I don't know. We'll see, Diamond. Hopefully they do that research. Sometimes I cheat when I want to punish myself. Deborah, don't do that, my dear. Why are you punishing yourself? Celebrate yourself. Love yourself. Show compassion to yourself. That makes that breaks my heart to hear you do that. Did you see the keto cancer study on diet? Dr. Keto is going to rule soon. Um, Rob, I don't know uh, which one you're referring to. Uh, I did just interview Dr. Richard Feynman uh, yesterday on the Live and La Vida Low Carb show. It'll be airing here next week uh, on Wednesday. Um, and he's doing some exciting in vitro uh, tissue research on cancer right now uh, with ketogenic. So definitely tune in to that. Gina says, great info once again. You're welcome. Always happy to watch your videos. It brightens my day. Oh, that's cool, J.E.M. Thanks for being here. Hallie says, I'm not tempted to eat off keto in the past when I did. My inflammation came back with a vengeance cheat day. No, thank you. I'm right there with you. Uh, we went to Texas Roadhouse, practically had them not bring half the meal even to our table. She brought biscuits and immediately I asked her, bring that back to the kitchen. They thought, huh? Yeah, Bonnie, when, uh, when we go out to eat, and I'm usually with a group of people, and we all eat keto, and they try to bring whatever the bread product is, or if we're in a Mexican restaurant, uh, they always uh, bring the chips and that kind of thing. And we're like, we don't need that, but thank you. Maybe I do a Jimmy rants on restaurant etiquette as a keto person, how not to look like an a-hole. So. Because I do always I always worry about that. I, how do we come across? So would you guys like to see a Jimmy Rants on how not to be an a-hole at a restaurant as a keto person? Anita says, oh, I just wondered to check them out too. Thank you. I so appreciate you and your no-nonsense approach. Thank you for that. So guys, the bottom line in this Jimmy Rants is we're going to be getting a lot more research coming out in this brand new study uh, albeit being a very small study, but it was a human study. It's not the bad uh, epidemiological study. It's not the mouse studies. It actually was of human beings, very small, nine young males that they put on a ketogenic diet, 70% fat, 20% protein, 10% carbohydrate diet. They did that for seven days, and then they followed it up with one 75 gram of glucose solution, just to see what would happen. And their theory was that it would raise their blood sugar, but they had no idea it was going to cause damage to blood vessels. And that's exactly what they found. So you think you want to cheat on your ketogenic diet? Uh-uh. Unless you like blood vessel damage, then go for it. That's all the time I have for this Jimmy Ranch, you guys. JimmyRants.com is the website. And as always, we start off over on Instagram Live in the morning. Typically, here in the afternoon, we try to do a YouTube Live. We're going to be doing more and more YouTube videos, uh, live videos, as this progresses, you guys. I'm trying to build the audience here a little more. Had a good following here today. Thank you guys for all your engagement here on YouTube Live. But if you missed the live, you can watch it on replay. Uh, so go and follow it over on YouTube. YouTube.com slash live in low carb man. You can also type in a keyword search, Jimmy Rants on YouTube, as well as Google. You will find the show. Finally, we have the best of the best moments of this year's show in podcast form. It's the Jimmy Rants podcast over on Apple Podcasts as well as Stitcher. All of these links, you guys, are at JimmyRants.com. And I saw several of you say, yes, please do the restaurant ad etiquette for keto people uh, rant. So I will plan to do that here in the near future. Maybe how not to be an a-hole for servers who go bites when you don't want bread or chips. Yeah. If they bring guacamole and chips, I'm like, leave the guacamole. 
you can have the chips, but we'll 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 hit that one in the Jimmy rants that I do 